Look at me at 17 degrees, limp wristed, really. Friday, coming into a brand spanking new weekend. It is August the 4th, and, well, check this out. That's right, you're right here at Galaxy 107 FM, and today, believe me, I am absolutely... Sh well, you know, we're going to talk about the long and the short of it, to be very honest with you, and we're going to get down and dirty. Of course, it is an Australian coming out of Melbourne, and uh, I have quite a few questions for... Uh, well, you know me, don't you? Yeah. But first of all, let me welcome everybody here on... Facebook Live, nice to have everybody along. Now, if you're a first-time watcher, nice to have you on board. Uh, let's do this. Sub, thumb, bell, bingo. The uh, reason why we do that is literally bell notifications when we do have important people, much like Patsy, who is, enjoy uh, who is joining us this morning out of Melbourne uh, from the long and the short of it. Uh, sub, well, why not subscribe? Become part of the family. We call it the noise here at Galaxy, literally... It is getting louder and louder and louder by the day. Get on board. Be a part of it. Uh, thummy thing, you know what to do with that, right? <clears throat> yeah, get epileptic with it. I triple double dare you. Uh, but in the meantime, let's kick it off. Here is the long and the short of it in Midnight Choir. Okay, we're off. Yay, we're doing it. Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> Let me just get rid of that thing there. There we go. Um, such a pleasure to meet you. Yes, lovely to meet you too, Grant. Oh, you'll be sorry. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> you will. <laughs> uh, honestly, if you need a psychiatrist at the end of this, I do have one that makes Skype calls. She is American, unfortunately, though. Okay. Yeah, but uh, believe me, she, she's well with her... Um, yeah, her juice, great artist too. Absolutely brilliant artist. So, Dave is with Mum. <clears throat> yep. What's the story there? Uh, what do you mean, what's the story there? <laughs> <laughs> Why couldn't he make it here? Is he... Uh... Because he's taking her to the airport. She's going on a holiday. Oh, he's not getting rid of her. <laughs> uh, yeah, temporarily. Ah, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's, who, who's the troublemaker? Is it here or is it Dave? Oh, I think it's Dave. Right. Yep. Like all good Australian men, right? <laughs> <laughs> Red blooded Australian men. Um, I gotta let you know that we are in every country in the world, uh, all, well, every English speaking country in the world. Some that aren't. And I don't know how that works, Patsy, oh. but I'll take it anyway. Yes. And. Um, <clears throat> Through the course of this, believe me, there'll be people giving me, uh, my, my on-air producer will be giving me bits of information and questions that people will be asking. Same with on this brand spanking new fangled uh, iPad-y thing that the bosses have actually splodged out from. <laughs> I, I'm amazed. Nine years of going, wow! <laughs> the last time they asked me if I wanted something, they asked me, it was summertime about three years ago, and they said, would you like a fan? A fan? You didn't get an air conditioner? Well, I was kind of saying, well, yeah, I would love a fan, you know, something about 18, you know, six foot two, maybe, blonde, blue eyed, comes from Sweden, she can do this all day. They got me a gold ear. Yeah, the selling point apparently was oscillating. It oscillates. <laughs> <laughs> Jared, yeah. yeah. Do you feel comfortable? Yeah. Nice. Uh, at the moment, obviously. <laughs> nice. Might change. Nice. Uh, I used to work with a couple of bands out of Australia. Mm. Mm. Both of those bands only had four letters to their name. Ah. I used to be their engineer. You might be able to pick it up.
That's right, you're right here at Galaxy 107 FM and today, believe me, absolutely elated. I'm meeting Patsy from the band The Long and The Short of it. I've got to ask straight away. Uh, Patsy, welcome to Galaxy. Thanks so much, Grant. It is a pleasure to have you. Now, where did the name come from? Who's Long, who's Short? <laughs> well, I'm, I'm the long one, although Dave sometimes would like to think he is, um, and Dave's very short. So that's how we got the name. Okay, uh, how short is very short? Mm, I'm about, I'm about, in the old measurement, about 5'10", and Dave's about 4'10", 11", 11. Okay. Nice, really okay. short. Okay, he needs heels, right? He does. He <laughs> wants to get big ones. <laughs> well, I'm looking forward to meeting Dave, but unfortunately, um, apparently he's at the airport. Well, which airport is he at? He's out at Tullamarine. Okay, and he's getting rid of Mum. Yeah. Where's Mum going? I'm not sure, to be honest. I think she's going to Queensland. Yeah, yeah. I, I was talking to a uh, member of Parliament uh, from Australia, and they were a little worried. Of course, when uh, the monarch passed away, they were kind of worried about Queensland because apparently it wanted to change its name. Ah, yeah. yes. Yeah, but the, uh, Kingsland, I mean, doesn't really suit, does it? No, 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 not at all. <laughs> and, and believe me, I've got nowhere to send men in dresses anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry about that. Uh, tell me, uh, and I'm going to get in depth and, and really, really down with this, but uh, I, I really want to know, how long are you two been singing together? Uh, believe me, I, I listen to bands all the time, I speak to bands all the time. Uh, you two actually sound like a comfortable old shoe together. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah no, we are. Um, we've been singing together since about 2007, so that would make it uh, about 16 years. Not bad. Not bad. <laughs> <laughs> very, very cool. Now, uh, straight away, I've, I've been asked uh, uh, by Jamie, coming out of North Carolina, uh, in Charlotte, North Carolina at that, uh, Patsy, as a, as a fan, how do we get hold of you? Are you on Facebook? Are you on Twitter? Are you on Instagram? Are you a talker? But more uh, importantly... Uh, I wish I could say I'm a talker, but you know, um, I'm no good at that. Uh, I bet you are though, Grant. Um, no, I, I have people do that for me. Ah, oh, that's handy. <laughs> Facebook, um, Insta, and also we have a web page, um, which people can send, um, you know, messages through to us and we'll always respond. Um, and that is, you know, the normal www.thelongandshortofit.com.au because we're in Australia. <laughs> yes, of course, not NZ. Eh? Yeah, I get that. <laughs> uh, but having said that, do you respond? Yeah, absolutely. And we're also on all of the social, you know, those sort of Spotify's and all that sort of stuff, Apple Music, all that. We're, we're on all of those things, yeah. But, yeah, if people want to send us a message... Um, we'll, we'll definitely respond, yeah. Very nice. Now, I'm going to take you down through the list of what we got here. Uh, we opened up with Midnight Choir. Now, I'm going to ask you a little bit about that very, very shortly, but we do have, coming up, uh, Kiss Me Better next. Uh, oh. 50 bucks and a case of beer. I love that. Really, really do. Uh, a Night of Our Life. Absolutely brilliant. And your most requested track to date, would you believe, is Kangaroo. Rodeo. Yes. yes. Yeah, believe me. Uh, which depends where you come from, really. <laughs> well, we have it called uh, Kangaroo here, if you know what I mean. Now, uh, yeah. Uh, believe me. I, I just got to ask you, though. Uh, <clears throat> have you learnt to spell beer in Australia yet? Have we learnt to spell it? Spell well, it. Well, Dave can do it, because he did it in Kangaroo Rodeo's video. Right. Uh, but it, he didn't survive it. He ended up sort of falling to the floor. But no, he can. He can do it. Okay. Well, believe me, when I first got to Australia many, many years ago to uh, come and work with a band, I don't know whether you've heard of them or not, uh, Crowded House. We did a thing at the Opera Centre in Sydney. Um, Crowded House. As soon as I landed, went straight to the pub Went in there, about a handful of people, it was daytime, believe me, Australians don't come out for a beer in the daytime, I've heard. Uh, but I went up to the bar and asked the barman for a beer, and he handed me this can that had four X's on it. Yes. <laughs> I went, what, can't spell beer? 
<laughs> I guess not. Bet I can spell more. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's very good. Well, you know, the 4X, of course, talking about Queensland, that's a very popular beer in Queensland, too. Well, I kind of like VB, I've got to be honest with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And that and Foster's. Yeah, yeah. they're the two. They're, they're the two from Victoria. Yeah, well, believe me, I absolutely love those beers. I really, really do. Yeah. Uh, now, let's get away from alcohol. Yeah. And, well, because maybe, just maybe, at the end of the night, after a lot of alcohol, you might be able to come up with Kiss Me Better. Uh, <laughs> tell me about, I really want, before I even get into Kiss Me Better, tell me about Midnight Choir. Okay, um, Mid Mid Midnight Choir was written, in fact, that whole album was written um, during the pandemic, and we were so, I mean, as you know, Melbourne was the most locked down city in the world, that was our claim to fame, and uh, so we were really craving getting out, you know, meeting friends, going to the pub, staying out after midnight instead of being in curfew, and so that's kind of how that song came about, it was all around having a good time with friends, you know, going out and having a drink, just being together and singing. So the Midnight Choir is uh, everybody having a sing, you know, after midnight. Believe me, you don't want me singing anywhere. <laughs> Doesn't matter. I don't want me singing on that one. Uh, I, I can't. <laughs> Listen, I, I sing tenor, or maybe 12 miles away from anybody that can hear me. <laughs> <laughs> That's the seriously honest thing I can say about that. Uh, now, kiss me better. Please tell me all about this. I play this in my car. Oh, do you? Oh, well, you must be an ice cream fan then, huh? Absolutely. <laughs> ah, well, me too. You see, that's the whole thing. I am a complete and utter um, ice creamaholic, I'd say. I love ice cream. And it'd have to be... Uh, the only the only thing that would, you know, I guess Kiss Me Better is all around um, Kiss Me Better than ice cream, basically. Um, and... Uh, and we liken the relationship to, you know, the love to all of the flavours in the ice cream world. Um, you know, I've got some favourites there, but uh, that's how that song came about. And it kind of didn't start out that way. We started out, I was wanting to write a more serious song in actual fact, but, um, but it came out that way. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised you play it in your car. <laughs> no, believe me, I, I start work about 10.30 at night and I'm lucky to get home by about 5. Right. And, and believe me, I've put uh, not only Kiss Me Better, uh, but the uh, Kangaroo song in my playlist on the way home. And I do hear it quite a bit, I really do. So, oh, <laughs> so right here, right now, joining us live is Patsy, and I've got a couple more questions for her very, very shortly uh, from the band. The long and the short of it coming out of Melbourne here is Kiss Me Better. <laughs> so Patsy, do you watch football? Uh, not as much as I should. Okay. You know, my whole fat my my brother in law was a football player and he um you know, he, he coached the Swans for a while too, you know, that kind of AFL footy. Okay. And I used to go when he was sort of, you know, doing all that sort of thing, but not in recent times. <laughs> okay, well uh, currently yeah, I'm, I'm like, yeah, go on, sorry, what do you like? Currently we're going through this trend Tasman thing between right. Australia and New Zealand with the Bledders Low Cup. Yes. Why haven't you won in 37 years? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I'm obviously not good enough, huh? What's going on with that? I mean, I, I thought the Wallabies would have been up to par. I mean, you world-class team. Yeah, I know, but not quite enough for the old blacks, you know. What can I say? Well, you get really empty when it comes down to a Nashers thing, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, I, I really do like to um, have a little bit of humour. It doesn't matter which side of Tasman we come from. Um, but I did have a question for your Prime Minister once. Yeah. Uh, you see, Tasmania is actually connected to New Zealand by the Intercontinental Shelf. Yes. Right? Yes. It belongs to us. Right. There right. So when do we get our taxes back? 
There you go. <laughs> Look, you see, last year, unfortunately, the world, the world was so weird, I didn't do a April Fool's thing, right? Yeah. <clears throat> there was no point. Besides, it was on a Saturday and we weren't working. <laughs> but <laughs> the year before that, I actually got in touch with the head man at the New Zealand Navy, and I spoke to him about towing the bloody thing back. Oh, right, okay. <laughs> yep. So we'll put in a formal request for our taxes back or we're coming to repossess it. Okay, not a problem. <laughs> <laughs> he says you can have the bloody devils. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're a good idea. Um, I should be going down to Tassie to do a little tour in October. There's a good idea. There's a good idea. How many yeah. countries are tuned in? Uh, 169. Nice. 169 countries tuned in right now. Perfect. Yeah, not bad. Right, you're right here at Galaxy 107 FM, and today I'm talking to Patsy from the band The Long and The Short of It, coming out of Melbourne, and uh, got to say hi to Terry Van Cannon, also Troy Tipton's in there, hello bad boy, nice to have you on board, Alice Walker, hello brother, nice to have you back as well, also Nick Clues coming out of the band, of course the Heartland Roots Band, out of Leicester in the UK, Nick, love, love, love your work, I really, really do, and uh, you guys must be in running for the longest on the breakfast show. Believe me, as far as the band goes, most requested or something like that. You're on there every day. I'm so proud of you guys. I really am. Uh, today, Patsy, it is such a pleasure to meet you. It really, really is. Now, uh, I got a couple of curly questions for you. Uh-huh. Okay. Uh, OAM. Yes? Do I call you Dane? <laughs> no, no, you don't. No. No, it's the Order of Australia Medal, and um, yeah, I got that because um, of community service, really. I, I do a lot of um, charity work and, you know, a lot of stuff in my community, and um, and yeah, it was very, it was really, that was most unexpected, yeah. You know, a huge, huge fan of what you do, believe me, we've done a lot of research and uh, uh, come up with about two pages. Oh dear. <laughs> it's concerning. The, the other question I do have is a personal question is if you always wanted to be a singer other than a lawyer. Uh -huh. Yes, I am a lawyer. Um, and I am a singer. I, I, I managed to do both. I did always want to be a, a singer. You know, you always have, when you're, when you're younger, you always have these sort of visions of um, somehow getting out there and, you know, doing the right thing and, you know, being a, an amazing singer. But uh, in the end, it was the law that sort of got me. It was the one that paid the bills. <laughs> and um, and now, you know, as time progresses, the singing's definitely becoming much more prominent. Yeah, believe me, uh, I, I think uh, you've finally found your vocation, to be very honest with you, because... Uh, well, you know, you've, you've had an ulterior life being in the legal. Did you not want to be a judge? Uh, I was offered that, believe it or not. Um, but no, it's a very lonely life, and I don't think I'd like that. You know, I, I much prefer sort of being out there helping people and not, you know, sitting up there judging people. <laughs> believe me, uh, I think you're one of my heroes, to be very, very honest with you. Uh, <laughs> And if I ever need a lawyer, I know who I'm going to ask. <laughs> and maybe today, you never know. Uh, now, touring. I, I want to know about touring. Have you got anything on for the forthcoming summer? Believe me, it's been absolutely tragic over this side of the ditch. Uh, last summer was just so wet, it wasn't funny. Yeah. Uh, but I kind of gather with the El Nino deal coming up that Australia and New Zealand, we're going to get hit by a heat wave, 
So I, I think it's a good time to get out and start planning doing festivals and stuff. You got anything coming up? Yeah, actually we have. Um, so we've got we've got quite a few things coming up. Actually, we're doing um, we're doing country cruising in December, and that's great. You know, we'll be doing um, going on that with a whole lot of artists from Australia. The only thing is, I don't have sea legs, so I'm. Uh, I'm already out there investigating all of the pills that I can take to stop me getting travel sick because I tell you, I'm, I'm not good. I'm really quite nervous about that. It would be nothing worse, I reckon, than being sick the whole time. So, but anyway, we'll see. Dave's a fisherman. He's fine. He can, he, you know, he'll be right. Um, and then we've got Tamworth Country Music Festival. We're doing that with um, uh, Brian Cad. I, I don't know whether you know Cad O, but he's, uh, he's a bit of a legend in Australia He's a lot older legend in Australia, and um, but he's amazing. And uh, so we're doing a show with him at Tamworth um, Country Music Festival. And before that, we're doing the Pyrenees Hideout Festival. We're going on a little tour in Tasmania in October um, and with our band, which will be fantastic. And there's a few other bits and pieces around Victoria we're going to do as well. So, but yeah, we've got a lot coming up. Very, very nice. Now, <clears throat> I got coming up here 50 bucks and a case of beer, but first of all, uh, the last time I was in Australia, I actually managed to get around and go and have a look around the outbacks and stuff like that. Ran into a uh, couple of guys literally out there. One was called Rob, and the other one was called Martin, and these guys were putting up power lines and putting in um, uh, repeater stations for the internet and stuff like that, right? Yeah. Uh, there used to be three of them, but unfortunately one apparently fell off the tower. Oh, and uh, that left the two of them, and, you know, they're both sort of sitting there, and Rob says to Martin, listen, I'm no good at telling people that their spouses died. What about you? And, he, and, and Martin says, no worries. i got it sorted, brother. <laughs> Absolutely. So he hops in the van, away he goes, goes down to this guy, Kelly, who had fallen off apparently and killed himself to his wife and he went up to his wife and says, oh, so you're, you're the ex Mrs. Kelly I heard. <laughs> and she goes, no, I'm not. And he goes, I'll bet you a case of beer. <laughs> so when he got back, they had a case of beer between each other. So <laughs> you can understand where that one went. Uh, yeah. <laughs> 50 bucks and a case of beer. This sounds yeah. like... Um, well, do I have to pay the 50 bucks and bring the case of beer, or what, what's the deal here? Uh, you know, it, it, it's, it's an amazing song, actually. It's about 16... There was a song that was done, I don't know, many, many years ago. It was called 16th Avenue, and it was about a down... And it, oh, it went to number one in the charts. So I'm talking a long time ago. This song kind of is about that. It's about all the artists that come to Nashville to make their careers... Um, as singer-songwriters, and most of them are down and out because they don't get to where they want to be, and they end up on the streets. And this song is about that. It's about um, a man selling, selling, you know, his songs on the street. And apparently, well, 16th Avenue is supposed to be based on a real story that this poor person was on the street and uh, they had this song. And which was 16th Avenue in actual fact, not 50 bucks a case of beer. And um, that song was sold for 50 bucks and a case of beer. And, um, you know, the, it went to number one, it made squillions. The songwriter who sold his rights away would have been, you know, very, very wealthy at the end of that one. Um, so, yeah, it's just a bit of a sad story, but it's, yeah, it's about that whole process, you know, seeing a songwriter sitting, sitting down on the, the street. And actual fact, there's, you know, our YouTube channel has uh, videos, and we did. We went to Nashville, and we shot the video for that song in Nashville as well, and um, and it was really great uh, because the guy that played the part of the down and out person, there used to be a. Oh man, I'm talking about years ago. There used to be a, 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 a country show where they had this duck running across the screen, uh, can, um, and and it had. Um, I'm just trying to think of the name of it. But he was the duck sound. And so we had this quite amazing actor uh, who had a show and, and an amazing songwriter, and he played the part of the down and out person. There you go. He wasn't Rick Deeds by any chance, was he? I don't, 
No, it wasn't. He was he was he was called the Quacker. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, amazing. Anyway, he, 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 the, there's a bit of a story about him just on its own. Yeah. Fair enough. Uh, well, believe me, when I saw the title, 50 bucks in a case of beer, I thought, well, you know, I'm going to have to delve deep into this one. You're right, Harry <laughs> Galaxy. The long and the short of it, joined by Patsy here, is 50 bucks in a case of beer. <laughs> How you feeling, Patsy? You okay? Yeah, all right. <laughs> nice, nice. You've put up with me for this long. I appreciate it. Oh, awesome. It. Thank you so much for having me, Grant. Not a problem. Believe me, we only play the best music here at Galaxy. We have an image, you know what I mean? Of course. Um, initially, when we first started this, Patsy, Barbara and I were getting drunk on air on a Monday night. We called it Monday, Skype Party Monday. <laughs> all right. And Sweet. we'd get all of our friends from around the world to Skype in, have a few drinks, and you know... Yeah. <clears throat> Wasn't good for our image, apparently, according to the bosses. <clears throat> so, but they loved the idea of doing the Skype thing. Yeah. So they said, come up with an idea. So Barbara and I put our heads together and uh, we came up with interviewing indie artists. Uh -huh. And it, we, at the start of this, thought, you know, maybe 10 people. Believe me, when we get to the end of this, you will be surprised how many are online listening. Yeah, we've done about two and a half thousand and, and interviews. Believe me, well. I will promise you there will be more than five million. Serious? I'm serious. Heavens. I very much am. Uh, we, yeah. we average between four and six million an hour. That is incredible. <laughs> it's freaky. Yeah, it's a bit. <laughs> <laughs> now, we've been doing this for about nine years. We're into our tenth year coming, <clears throat> and uh, as I said, we're happy if we had ten people to start with. But yeah. doing so many interviews, they tell their friends, their family, and everything like that. Three and, and a half thousand plus. We yeah, three and a half thousand interviews later. <gasps> wow! This is the response. So. Um, <clears throat> well done. Team, that's awesome. Now, I do have to ask you, and I ask everybody this, okay? <laughs> uh, forgive me, but you're not a vegan by any chance, are you? No. You're not. You're a meataholist like me? I am. Have you ever tried a vegan sausage? Yes. Was it made of real vegans? <laughs> I think it had some sort of nut in it or something. I don't know. <laughs> so it was, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was upset when I found out that Girl Guide biscuits weren't made of real Girl Guides. And unfortunately, you, you know Johnson & Johnson? Yes. They got me on the blacklist. They oh, won't answer my phone calls, my emails, my texts. Oh, okay. and look, I was talking to a representative, one of the bosses, and I just said simply, say how many babies in a bottle? Yeah. Mm. That could be a big mistake selling off your work for a case of beer and 50 bucks, though, couldn't it? Could be. I think it was in that case. <laughs> but that doesn't mean to say, I mean, it was just one song. He might have had a hundred or more that he could have sold as well, you know? True. <laughs> it was that one that went to number one, though. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's the clincher, isn't it? Really? Yeah. Uh, Nick, please, the same, Gabe Barber and DJ Grant, Galaxy Yardis. Nice to have you on board, Nick. It really, really is. And uh, yes, we do love your band. We really, really do. Now, uh, Patsy, you may see this thing. You remember Darth Vader from Star Wars? Yes. Yeah, well, that's Barbara with her uh, devicey thing. Ah. And I've got to move quickly, otherwise I might lose an appendage. You know what I mean? <laughs> I really do. <laughs> it's one of those. Uh, now, having said that, uh, I do have a young lady by the name of Patricia. Uh, yes. She's coming out of uh, Palermo in Italy. She's asking, uh, do you have a website where I can buy merch? Do you have merch for sale? On the website, um, we used to. We actually just changed it around. We don't have the merch on the website. You can buy 
the you can buy all of the merch on Apple and you know all those sort of stations and Spotify and those all of that stuff you can buy Deezer whatever they all are you can get it there. You just just I need to say this though there's a the long and short of it there's a there's a band in Los Angeles that we didn't know about and they're not really very um, prevalent these days but they have the same name so be careful because they're a they're a death rock kind of different music, different style, and uh, full of obscenities. And uh, we had a person come up to us at a gig and said, I didn't know that you, uh, you know, you wrote a song like that. That was, uh, that was pretty terrible. And uh, we didn't know about them until then. But So just be a bit wary of that. We've got them off all of our, our pages. They're not there anymore. But... <laughs> uh, believe me, I hear this a lot. There, oh. is, there is a lot of bands out there. Uh, like a particular band coming out of Norway, which is absolutely a blinder of a band. And uh, Arno says to me, Grant, there's another lobster out there. Oh. And <laughs> now they're playing music oh. as well. It gets confusing and everything like that. So it does happen from time to time. Yeah, and it does. Yeah, it does. And it did for us. But if, 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 she, if she wanted to write to us via our email on our website, uh, we will make sure we send one to her signed. So... It's the long and short of it dot com dot au. She does if she pops that in, um, we'll come up and um, we'll send one out signed. There you go. Nice. No, we'll do that for free. The, the signing. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, <laughs> maybe, maybe then. Uh, just maybe. You never know. Uh, you may want to send me a t-shirt because I'd be very honoured to wear your brand while I do these interviews. And believe me. It's subliminal. It works. It really, really does. I've had people say to me, I was watching you, you know, but I was on the interwebby thing checking out who you were wearing and buying the t-shirts, the koozies, the caps, guitar picks, all that sort of stuff. So uh, if you want, uh, I'll get Barbara to send you the details. I'd be more than honoured to that wear. That would be awesome. Thank you. We'd love to do that. It would be an absolute pleasure on my part. It really, really would. And... Uh, I'm going to ask you very, very shortly about new music coming up and stuff like that. Yes. Uh, because I do have uh, uh, people asking, you know, are you, are you going to be releasing more new music and stuff? So we'll get down that road very shortly, but the night of our life. Tell, yes. me, tell me about this. I'm fascinated with this track. Yeah, this, um, the night of our life was our last uh, album before, obviously, Midnight Choir. Um, which did very well in the charts for us too. That's the title track of that album. Um, we we love, absolutely love, travelling and meeting people. And um, the night of our life is about that whole process. You know, we're touring, we're going to different places, we're meeting new faces, and we're just having the best time. So uh, that is about touring and meeting people. Very, very cool. And I've got to be honest with you, we're... Uh uh, all the crew here love to go on tour with us as well, if you know what I mean. Uh, yeah. Because Barbara does have an entertainment company uh, that she manages, brings bands into the country, up and down the country. We do so. One of those jobs is just awesome, it really is. So you, you never know. Well, we, you never know your luck in a big town. Yeah, we might get you <laughs> over here, uh, do a few shows. Uh, but I also know that you do festivals yourself, so you never know. We might be able to do a bit of contra going on. Yeah, and sure. In the meantime, let's have the night of our life. You're right here at Galaxy. Here's the long and the short of it. Ah. So we have Kangaroo up next, or Rodeo. Yeah, that was a funny, that was the best time, that one. Nice. We went, we went all the way up to... Um, you know where they shot Crocodile Dundee? We went all the way up to the to the, to the north of Australia to shoot that in in the same place because that was the only place you could really have kangaroo rodeo. Yeah, it's um it's a it was the funniest time we've ever had. We had the whole town in that video, all fifteen of them, and um, it was amazing. All these grey nomads coming through, and oh, we had the best time. <laughs> very very cool. How many cities have turned out? It was 169. 169? Yeah. Yep. Cities? Yeah. Cities. Oh. Not countries? Cities. 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 Next I, page. Go to the next page. No, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> 2,428. 29. 2,429 cities. 30. 30. Wow. 30. Okay. 
Any advances on fee? Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's a lot of cities around the world. Yeah, of course. That really, really is a lot. And, and believe me, um, we, as I said, we only play the best in the world. We, and you've ticked all the boxes because I don't know how Barbara does this. I really don't. She gets about 200 bands a day submitted, if you know what I mean. She's vicious with her red pen. <laughs> she has to be because we only have a certain amount of time in a week to be able to do these. You know what I mean? Thank you so much. I mean, Barbara's gorgeous. I mean, yeah, I, I think, um, we, you know, we, we, I mean, this is amazing. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Oh, it's an absolute, I'm very, very humbled to meet you. I really am. Uh, I do want to talk about um, Ryan. Uh, sorry, Kenny Royster. Oh, yeah. Okay, I do want to talk about him as, yeah, of course. as well. Uh, but believe me, when Barbara and production sort out enough, um, and we really only choose the best because the board could be anywhere between 12 or 8 people. Again, yeah. as I say, the, the image is the only thing they're concerned about. So we take yeah. the best of the best, and then it comes to me on a USB device, Ooh. I play you in my car. Now, the reason for that is actually two reasons. First reason is nobody can influence me on whether or not I want to do the interview. You yeah. know what I mean? Based on the music, no, I, don't, I get, get no information. Don't know who it is, don't know the name of the song, just the music, right? Yeah. Second thing is, well, <clears throat> nobody else wants to drive with me. <laughs> I get that. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> Believe me, it's very true. <laughs> Right, you're right, Here we Galaxy 107 FM, and well, believe me, I think it is a uh, night for somebody out there around the world, and you're enjoying today's interview with, of course, the long and the short of it. Uh, we're talking to Patsy. Now, Patsy, <coughs> believe me, absolutely love, love, love your work, and I do want to talk to you about new stuff coming up in the near future, but I do want to talk to you very, very quickly about Kenny Royster. Yep. Tell me about this gentleman, because I know he's got credential here with uh, Luke Combs, for instance. Yeah, he has. And when we, went, we, we first met Kenny in 2013, and uh, when we went to Nashville, he recorded the Night of Our Life album. Actually, he recorded uh, You Made Me Stronger at that time, and we've, been, we've recorded other ones with him since then. But at that time, he was coaching um, Luke Combs, um, vocal coaching him. And... Uh, and he'd been vocal coaching Luke for a couple of years, and then he recorded eight of the songs on his first album, and that album was then taken over by Sony. Um, but they didn't change any of the production at all, of course, because uh, Kenny's so incredibly, you know, like, yeah, he's so pedantic, he just must have it perfect. He said, if I'm doing a, an album for you, I want it to be world class. You know, you can look, you can sing, you can look back on that album and know that, you know, you really still love it. Um, so he did that with Luke, and uh, they didn't change any of those eight songs, and that album went triple platinum in, uh, throughout the world. And so we, after that, thought, oh, that means we won't be able to afford Kenny anymore because, you know, he's too, he's really up there. But, you know, it's crazy, but he's such a good friend. And Dave, he's like his mini me, you know, he... He, they both love dirt bike riding, they both love fishing, they, they've just got them like a house on fire. So that friendship has meant that we've continued that relationship and we're still getting, we're getting mates rates, which is very, very good for us. And he does, he vocally coaches us on our albums too. He, um, he's been trained by the best and, you know, we get, we've learned so much from him. It's been a fantastic relationship. That is super, super cool. It really, really is. Uh, you see, myself, I've um, <clears throat> been an engineer now for almost 40 years. I've got to be, it's starting to creep up there. <laughs> really, really. <laughs> is. 
but I've not only been a studio engineer, I've been a front of house engineer as well and travelled around the world with some of the biggest bands in the world, yeah. uh, especially some very, very big bands coming out of Australia and um, also recorded in some of the most prestigious recording studios in the world as well. And believe me, I've done the Beatles thing and all that. You know what I mean? Chess yes. Chess records and believe me, absolutely fantastic places. They really, really are in history. <clears throat> but uh, I've got to ask you, though, uh, have you ever uh, considered maybe going to Calgary? Well, we could. <clears throat> yeah. No, why not? Yeah, yeah. Just recently, of course, they had the um, Calgary Stampede, if you remember. Yes. Yeah, another company that won't return my calls. I, I thought, you know, running at the centres might be a good idea. Yeah. Why not? You know what I mean? You could throw candy canes at people. Yeah. 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 No. <clears throat> they didn't find it amusing at all, to be honest with you. <laughs> but you guys over there do have radios and everything like that as well, don't you? Yes, we do, believe it or not. <laughs> it, it's almost extinct here in New Zealand, and I don't really know why, because I think it's a fantastic sport. I mean, getting on, you know, a couple of tonne. Uh, that's bucking you all over the place and being able to ride it for eight seconds, fantastic. I, I love the idea, I really, really do love the sport itself. So well, I don't know why it's phasing out here in New Zealand, uh, but I hope it's as strong as ever over where you are. Yeah, very much in the north of uh, the north of the country, you know, up near Queensland again, <laughs> and, um, and the Northern Territory, and even uh, New South Wales, and yeah, Western Australia, there's lots and lots of them happening. Not so much down here in the south. Now, you, you're in, <clears throat> dare I say, is it Yarraville? Yarraville, yeah. Yarraville. It, isn't yeah. that the river, Yarra? Yeah, it is. We're very close. Yeah, yeah. believe me, I've been on a houseboat up and down through there. Oh, okay. Yeah, about half a dozen houseboats actually and a lot of partying going on at the same time. It was <laughs> yeah. fantastic. It really, really was. Uh, but love, 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 the uh, the whole experience of doing the Yarra really, really was fun. Uh, but isn't that a wine area? Don't you grow grapes here and make wine? In the Yarra Valley they do, yes. It's further further north. Ah. From where, yeah, because we're inner city. We're inner city here. And then further north, the Yarra up there, uh, yeah, Yarra Valley. And that's kind of where the river starts, I think. Okay, okay. Very, very cool. Uh, one of the few places that I do absolutely remember after sobering up was the <laughs> Igamoga pub <laughs> when I went over that way, believe me. Uh, and really, do you remember the old magazine, the People's Post? Yes. The Australian yes. Post used to have yes. the cartoon of the Igamoga pub in there? Yeah, they did, yes. Um, my mum used to read that way back in the day, literally. Wow. And I just had to make a visit. And it's identical to what it was cartooned like. Yeah, it's all sort of crooked. And, you know, it's interesting, but the poor old pub has been, since they put the freeway through, it's, it's been bypassed. So you have to make, you have to actually turn off the freeway now to get to it. And, uh, and I think they've probably missed out on a fair bit of trade because of it, you know. Mm, yeah, yeah. But they call that progress, don't they? Yeah, they've been bypassed. Yeah, <laughs> progress, yay. But believe me, fantastic place. If you get a chance to go and have a look at the Egamoka pub, please do. Fantastic folks there. There really, really is. Love, love, love that. Uh, I was talking to a friend of mine not so long ago. Uh, his name is uh, Anthony. Now, he said, Grant, I grew up in the outback, so I had a kangaroos bouncing through my backyard, through my front yard. When I go to school, I see them every day. And I went, OK, Anthony. Why can't kangaroos bounce backwards? Mm -hmm. He said, can't they? Now, <laughs> <laughs> seriously? <laughs> uh, it, it's basically because of their tail, right? That's actually right, yeah. But this guy, believe me, if he's had them bouncing around his backyard every day, surely I thought he might be able to answer that one. He surprised <laughs> me by going, can't they? But, I have heard many, many songs about kangaroos over the years, you know what I mean? And had many, many jokes about boxing kangaroos and everything like that. I'm loving this. And I've got to be honest with you, as far as requests go, you're right up there right now. 
uh, every morning, I, well, every evening, I come into work, I go to the reception, I get my USB devices that gives me all the stats and everything for the day, requests, because the breakfast show primarily is made up of requests. How many people I ask for what artist, what song, you know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, then I go to production, production, and I fight it out over the next number of hours and structure a brand spanking new breakfast show every day. Kangaroo has become quite a feature in my breakfast show, and, well, I want to know personally, what's the secret to this success? How come everybody seems to identify with this? I have no idea. You know, you're quite right, because um, we didn't know that, uh, that it was being played in most of the rodeos or rodeos, however you say it, um, all throughout Australia. Uh, and we started getting these little, not great royalty checks, but little royalty checks, and we realised that it was quite popular and it was getting played there, you know, around Australia. And we get little notes about where it was being played. So it's great to hear you you're playing it. Um, I don't know, you know, I don't know whether it's a did it, did 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 you know, I don't know. I, it's just a very fun song, you know, about a guy trying to give up drinks, going into the pub with his mates. God, he had no hope. No hope at all. No hope at all. Believe me, I, I know that one myself. I really, really do. Uh, I personally don't drink uh, until my mates come and pick me up on a Sunday. <laughs> yeah, it's true too, to be honest. Yeah. Uh, but having said that, uh, I'm loving the, um, well, your bit right at the very end as well. I've got to be honest with you, absolutely <laughs> love that bit. I really, really do. Uh, you know, I got that in one take. I got that and Kenny nearly fell off his chair. Uh, when, when we did that, uh, because he because he didn't think that I could do the Australian accent, you see, yeah. So uh, yeah, he um, he nearly fell off his chair. He said, "Oh, one take, Patsy, you know, one take, Patsy." <laughs> <laughs> love it, love it, love it. I really, really do. Uh, Twenty-seven hundred and fifty-one requests to date so far, and tomorrow <laughs> it will be more. Believe me, it really, really will. I I know as soon as I do these interviews, people before you know it. Uh, giving us requests for the song the next day. It's just going to go awesome. up. In the meantime, ladies and gentlemen, let me present to you the long and the short of it. Here is Radio forward slash Kangaroo. Yeah. How are you feeling? Yeah, good, thank you. Nice, Thanks. nice. Do you remember uh, William Shatner? Yes. Yeah, Captain Kirk? Yeah. I see in the news this morning his government, oh, by the way, their Prime Minister is separating from his wife at the moment. <laughs> um, really? their, their government has asked William Shatner to, uh, well, he's had, he's had to recall all his lingerie. Oh, oh, really? Yeah, apparently <laughs> Shatner panties isn't a good name. No. <laughs> You're bad. I'm bad, yeah, I know. I'll be, I'll be banned from Facebook. That's what I'm going to have to use. Oh, yeah, please do. Um, <clears throat> Patsy, you'll get a copy of everything we do today. Oh, thank um, you. Barbara will make what we're doing right now into a movie. She'll add some pictures and stuff like that. So when we finish this, don't go anywhere just yet, because oh, believe right. me, the staff are going to crowd the monitors and take photos and stuff like that. Okay, fantastic. Um, but I usually tell people, show it to people you don't like. Right, okay. <laughs> no, honestly, it, <clears throat> there's a reason for it. Uh, if you show it to your family and your friends, they're all going to love it anyway. Yeah, of course. Right, because they're family and friends. Yeah. But if you show it to people you don't like, they get a fire under their bums and get in touch with us, and before you know it, we're doing interviews. All right, perfect. You know, so, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, please, please, please do that. Now, my device thing has gone off again. What's happened? <laughs> Oh dear, okay. You keep touching it so no, it's it stays right out of power. Oh, okay. Can you believe that? Oh dear. Again. That's not very friendly. Anyway. Oh well. Got a brain speaking new device. <clears throat> oh yes, and it's out of power, huh? Yeah. Like yeah, that's what I keep saying to the wife. <laughs> I got, I gotta be Nice to my on-air producer because it is my wife, and if I'm not nice, well, um, she'll throw something heavy at me. Swing it up against it. 
You know, the wonderful thing is, I tell a lot of ladies, you know, my on air producer not only is my wife, but she's You've got to the hear voice the end in my of head. Though, and she's, you know, a lot of these people will say, that's fantastic. You know, I went, yeah, legally, she is the voice yeah. in my head. She can get away with it now, and she gets paid for it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dear, dear. How are we going then, Barb? Are we okay? Yeah, I'm all good. We're all good, Barbara. Yeah, my nice. trusty phone's all good. Nice. I see Barbie is the biggest box off selling yeah. deal at the moment. Yeah. Just hear the end of kangaroo. <clears throat> Just hear the end of kangaroo, yeah. okay. Yeah. So, okay, has anybody ever really tried to ride that big red? Well, Dave did in the video, um, it, it was stuffed, <laughs> and uh, you've got no idea the comments on the veranda of the uh, of the pub when he was about to hop on and do a jump down for the final scene of the film, um, the clip, the movie clip. So people are going to have to have a look at it, because it is very funny. And we did all of our own, um, you know, all of our own scenes, uh, all of our own stunts, <laughs> yeah, I think they'll have fun. We had fun. You know, so they have, <clears throat> every time I hear of a kangaroo, the first thing that comes to mind is Skippy. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it really does. <laughs> Believe me, it, it, that program haunted me for years. It really, really did. You know, the, the sound it made. Mm, crazy. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah something like that. <laughs> Glad you did it. <laughs> <laughs> Now, I, I do want to know, do you have any new music coming out in the very, very near future? We sure do. Um, we're releasing a whole host of singles at the moment, and uh, we're bringing out an EP in September. We still haven't got a name for the EP, but it's got a series of songs on it. Some um, some are actually cover songs. We've just done a version of, for example, the Avicii song, Wake Me Up. And uh, that came out just beautifully uh, because it's a bit more bluegrassy, a bit more country in, its, in the way it's been sung. Um, and, yeah, we've got uh, Dream Vacation. We've got some sort of lovely ballads. We've got some much more up-tempo stuff. There'll be about six songs on that EP. Um, so keep your eyes and ears out for that. We'll make sure we get that to you too. Um, Grant, yeah. You know, that, that just basically means to me, and I'm excited about this, that maybe, just maybe, you might want to come back for another interview. Oh, that would be awesome! I mean, you know what, we bring Dave. Yeah, we, uh, hey, listen, uh, <clears throat> no, I, I didn't mention a high chair. <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> he has to have a high chair. Or sit on one of one or the other, really. He can't, we can work it out. <laughs> You'll have to get Mum's permission, though, apparently. I know, I know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, otherwise uh, she could be off there having fun with her friend and not worrying about Dave. That's exactly right. I think she worries about him all the time anyway. <laughs> <laughs> mothers. Absolutely brilliant. We love mothers and we love everybody that supports not only their sons, their daughters, everything that they do when it comes to music in their bands. Absolutely. Yeah. We love you guys. We do. Keep up the good work too, by the way. Patsy, that does wrap it up for us for our very first interview and I do apologise for anything you, you may have found rather distressing. Looking at me is a very good start with that one. Uh, <laughs> no, but no. would love, love, love to have you come back again. Please don't go anywhere just yet because we're going to do a few backstage things very, very shortly. We'll get, uh, you know, things going on there. But in the meantime, we'd love to have you back. For you guys, it is a pleasure to have you guys. And believe me, why not join us next week on Tuesday? We've got two brands making new interviews coming up. Fantastic. Barbara does such a good job. She really, really does. In the meantime, have a very happy and successful weekend. Join me between 5, 5.30 and 10 o'clock Monday morning for the breakfast show. See you then. Galaxy. Galaxy.